Hey what's up guys then my offer simple snippets and i'm back with another video tutorial on cpu scheduling algorithm so in this video tutorial we'll be going through the shortest job first preemptive algorithm so if you've seen the previous two video tutorials which was fcfs and shortest job first non preemptive then you'll pretty much understand this one and this is a slight variation of the shortest job first wherein this has preemptive capabilities now preemption means that the processor can pause a process and switch to another process depending upon some criteria so this algorithm is also known as srt which is shortest remaining time so don't get confused when you've been asked to calculate different criteria for srt algorithm the srt and sgf with preemption are the same so with that being said let's get started okay so as you can see on the screen we have four different processes p0 p1 p2 and p3 now we've been given with the arrival time 0 2 4 and 5 and also the burst time so arrival time is the time when the process arrived in the queue and burst time is the time required by the particular process process to be completely processed by the cpu so the cpu would require 7 milliseconds to complete p0 now the time is in milliseconds over here it can also be in micro or nanoseconds and these are three different criteria that we need to find out that is the completion time turnaround time and waiting time so completion time as the name suggests is the time when the process actually finished turnaround time is the time spent by the process inside the queue and waiting time is the time wherein the process was inside the queue but did not get cpu time so cpu was busy scheduling or processing some other process so in order to calculate these three criterias and lastly we have to also find out the average turnaround time and average waiting time so to calculate all these criterias we need to plot down a gantt chart of how the processes came into the uh, queue and how we allotted the time so let's get started with process p0 now we know at time t0 process p0 came into the queue so at zero time we know p0 has come into the queue since there is no other process which came at time p1 so the processor directly starts processing p0 so we can write down p0 over here this is time 0 and we know it requires 7 milliseconds so when 2 seconds have passed so for example 2 seconds have passed and we know at time 2 process p1 also came into picture or came into the queue so this is at time 2 now since this is a preemptive type of algorithm which means that the processor can actually pause a process and move to another process in this type of algorithm the processor checks the remaining time so when 2 seconds have been passed we know that p0 still needs 5 seconds to complete its process that is the cpu requires 5 more seconds to complete p0 but at this point we have one more process p1 which came in at time 2 and it's burst time is 4 so if you if you can see that 4 is less than 5 at time 2 so now the cpu will preempt this process p0 and start processing p1 because at time equal to 2 p0 requires 5 more milliseconds but p1 requires 4 milliseconds so p1 is less than p0 and since this is shortest job first with preemptive capabilities cpu will stop processing p0 and move to p1 so i'll write down p1 over here and this 5 milliseconds is the time that still p0 requires to complete so now cpu has started processing p1 and we know the burst time is 4 so after 2 seconds the time would be 4 and at time 4 we know that p2 also comes into the queue now p1 has completed 2 milliseconds and 2 milliseconds are still left but at time 4 we got one more process p2 which requires only 1 millisecond so at time 4 the cpu will see that p1 requires 2 milliseconds but p2 which is a new process requires only 1 millisecond so it will preempt p1 and start processing p2 and p1 will be stopped and p2 will be processed by the cpu for 1 millisecond so we have 4 plus 1 that is 5 and we know p2 is completely processed because it only requires 1 millisecond of time now at time 5 we have p3 coming into picture which requires 4 milliseconds so this came in at time 5 and it requires 4 milliseconds of processing time now the cpu will check which is the process which requires the shortest amount of time so we already have p1 which requires 2 milliseconds we have p0 which requires 5 milliseconds and now p3 has come at time 5 which requires 4 milliseconds so out of these three processes that is p3 p1 and P0 we know that P1 requires the least so it will start processing P1 for 2 milliseconds so we have 5 plus 2 that is 7 so now P1 is completely finished so you can write down 0 over here you can write down 0 over here which this indicates that it is finished now again the cpu will check the time that is needed to process P3 and P0 because we are only left with P0 and P3 so now the processor or the cpu knows that P3 requires 4 milliseconds and P0 requires 5 milliseconds so it will start with P3 for 4 milliseconds and 7 plus 4 would be 11 and lastly we have P0 which will get 
CPU time for 5 milliseconds. So this would be 16. So this is how the GAN chart of shortage job first with preemption looks like. And it's a bit confusing because at every millisecond you need to check which process is coming into the queue. And we also have to check the shortest remaining time. So now that we've calculated the GAN chart, now we can see the completion time. So if you can see P0 came in at 0 time into the queue, but it actually completed its process at 16 milliseconds. So you just have to write 16 over here. For P1, it came in at the second millisecond or millisecond number 2, but it completed its entire processing at 7th millisecond. So you just write down 7 over here. Similarly for P2, P2 finished at 5th millisecond and P3 finished at 11th millisecond. Now turnaround time is given by the formula CT minus AT that is completion time minus arrival time. So you can see 16 minus 0, which is going to be 16. 16, then we have 7 minus 2 which is 5, 5 minus 4 which is 1 and 11 minus 5 which is 6. The waiting time is given by turnaround time minus burst time. So 16 minus 7 which would be 9, 5 minus 4 which would be 1, 1 minus 1 which would be 0 and 6 minus 4 which would be 2. Now there is another way to calculate turnaround time and waiting time. So if you don't know these formulas, this is how you go about calculating turnaround time. So we know turnaround time is the time spent by the process inside the queue. So you can calculate that using the Gantt chart itself. So you know that P0 came in the queue at 0 second. You know that the arrival time is 0 right and it was there inside the entire queue till the end. So that is the reason why it has turnaround time as 16. Similarly, we know P1 came in at time 2 but it finished at time t equal to 7. So the total time it spent is 7 minus 2 that is 5. So that's how you calculate turnaround time. And you can also calculate waiting time just by knowing what waiting time is. So waiting time is the time the process had to wait wherein the processor was working on some other process. So you can calculate waiting time for P0. So you know P0 came in at 0 time and it got processor time at 0. So it did not have to wait for the first time. But it paused at time 2 and then directly got time at 11. So from 2 to 11 it had to wait right. So we just have to subtract this 11 minus 2 we get waiting time as 9. Similarly for P1, P2 and P3. So even if you don't know the formula just by knowing what turnaround time and waiting time is you can actually calculate it using this GAN chart. So now simply you need to take a total of waiting time. So we have 9 plus 1 that is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12 and total of turnaround time so we have 16 plus 5 which is 21 plus 1 is 22 22 plus 6 is 28 now the average turnaround time is given by total turnaround time divided by the number of processes so that would be 28 divided by the number of processes are 4 which would be 7 so and the average waiting time would be 12 divided by 4 which would be 3 and this is in milliseconds, so msec and msec. Okay, so this is how the CPU scheduling algorithm works for shortage job first with preemption. And you need to just check the remaining time for every time a new process comes into the queue. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the shortage job first with preemption method, which is also known as SRT or shortest remaining time. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.